Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dasha presenting our work, Designing a Willing to Use in Public Hand Gesture Interaction Technique for Smart Glasses. This is a cooperation between Helsinki Institute for Information Technology, Helsinki University, and also Padova University. I would like to show a video first to illustrate the problems when using smart glasses in public space. Banana. 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 Yeah, so as you can see in this video, current te interaction techniques for smart glasses can be so obtrusive that people don't want to use them in public. Um, so we surveyed the possible techniques and also proposed design principles in this paper. We also propose a solution that is the best, is, that is a growth system enabling independent tracking, tracking of the hand and also provide tactile feedback. Um, the system was evaluated in public and with three distinct interaction scenarios. And the result shows that people are able to complete all the tasks in an unobtrusive manner, and they are willing to use them in public. So now let's go back to the problems and the motivation. Smart glasses have already emerged in the market, especially these two big companies propose their design and also their envisioned future applications. But actually, there are so many different um, variations of the glasses and also manufacturers producing the smart glasses. And it's actually now a com commercially available product. But then we have these two questions. How are we going to interact with them and how acceptable are they? For example, Google Glasses use this voice control and also touch and swiping gestures on the frame. However, the interaction is very limited. Another example is this HoloLens. Their air tap gesture requires you to point your hand up and then bend your finger to make a click. The camera is installed on the glasses, so the gesture has to be performed in front of your face, which results in fatigue and also getting too much attention. So but this example can rush up too much attention, either disturbing others or it's too embarrassing to use in front of others. So we target uh, this social acceptability issue since it's, if it's not socially acceptable, people simply don't want to use them. So there are several possible techniques that can be categorized in these three types. The first one is touch and handheld. For example, Epson has this handheld design with touchpad interface. This can enable unobtrusive interaction since you can even use the device with your hand in your pocket. And you can also make very subtle finger gestures. But this design requires you, the users to hold an additional device in the hand while high mobility and also high degree of freedom should be the major concern in this context. Moreover, the directional, uh, sorry, Direct interaction becomes big difficult because the visual contents are, now, are no longer touchable. Another option is to use hands-free techniques. For example, gaze input, facial recognition, and also head gestures. Only slight muscle action is involved in this, in, in this type of interaction, but that requires ex excessive sensors wearing on the, on the head and also requires much calibration and is prone to tracking errors. Another type is on body gestures. On body gestures requires users to perform a gesture in physical contact, contact with part of the body. Touching on the body can be of less concern since we usually do that unconsciously. However, the interaction might be limited to touch events and in this case, palm type that requires both hand. We have already seen examples of mid-air hand gestures that can get too much attention, but we still we want to go back to this because it has the potential for enabling natural and intuitive interaction, just like we're interacting with our daily life objects. 
And it is actually the technical limitation that causes this social accessibility problem. Most techniques are based on the computer vision, and that has these two problems. The first is occlusion, that the system simply cannot truthfully recognize your gestures, and also viewing angle, that you have to perform your gestures within the viewing angle of the camera. An example of air tap in HoloLens, rather than using the hand to interact with the visual content, it's more like just showing the gesture to the, to the camera. And it is possible to wear the camera on other parts of the body so that, but, so that you don't have to perform the gesture up in the eye level. But again, this, this example relies on computer vision and that does not solve occlusion issues. So we propose to use sensor equipped wearable devices around the hand. This is our design. Our sensor-based glove use initial measurement unit for tracking hand orientation, and also on the fingers we have flex sensors to track the finger pose. At the same time, we also have vibro tactile actuators for providing tactile feedback on the fingers, and also Bluetooth module for wireless communication with the smart glasses. The distributed sensors on the hand enable tracking both course arm movement and also fine finger gestures. Additionally, the tactile feedback can be applied directly on the action performing body. Both of these advantages are not possible on other form factors such as rings or wristbands. The basis of this interaction is built on mapping a reference orientation to the center of the display. And active region can be de defined accordingly. This technique allows users to set a reference orientation in any pose freely, which enables the gesture to be performed in a comfortable and less obtrusive pose, and is easy to adapt to various conditions. I will introduce three common scenarios that we develop, and it's quite common in mobile applications. Text entry, select, selecting one from many, and scrolling. This is a video of showing how the interaction is like when using the glove with smart glasses. Um, please note that even though it looks like the hand is in front of the face, but the glove can be actually used in low pose. Here we're just trying to show the, both the hand gesture and the visual interface at the same time. So as you can see, three keys are grouped together and they are hi highlighted as group according to your hand movement. And each finger is associated to one of the key in the group to type, you simply bend one of the finger. And we have this design that to fix the key group composition, so each key is always associated to a specific finger. In the long run, with muscle memory, it can improve your performance. And also, we have a special design for the margin that this uh, is to filter out either sensor noise and also the hand jittering, especially between the edge, between the groups. So it's a bit feel like sticky when you are moving in between the key groups. And the glove also provides tactile feedback when you are typing. So when you hit the key on the individual finger, you can feel a vibration pulse. And also when you cross the edge of the group, the key group, you can also feel a pulse, vibration pulse on the finger. The second one is selecting single from many. The system is not activated until a pointing gesture is recognized. And one of the icons will be highlighted according to pointing orientation. And by bending the index finger, you can select an item. We also design this grab and drag gesture to activate a swiping action. Again, there's the same vibration supplied here. So when you are selecting an icon, you can feel a vibration pulse on the finger. And also when you are moving between different icons. And the third scenario is scrolling. Again, this system is not activated until you make a grabbing gesture. 
and the inclination of the hand triggers scrolling up or down. And in this example, we can see a hyperlink showing on the top right corner. To select the, in, to select the hyperlink, you make a pointing gesture and move your hand toward that direction. And our idea is that the system would not require you to move from this current orientation and all the way to the far end. When the system recognizes that you are making a pointing gesture and you are moving toward that direction, we can already highlight the hyperlink so that you can you don't have to move move that far, which will get much more attention than just a slight action here. And again, to bend the index finger, you can make a selection. In the evaluation, we built three, um, there were three tasks built around these three scenarios. And the way to evaluate social acceptability is we adopt this questionnaire proposed by Rigoel. And in their design, um, there's only this uh, interface showing a video in which there is a man performing the gestures. And on the side, there are these questions regarding the in which locations or in front of um, the different types of audience, whether you are willing to use these gestures in, front of, in these conditions. But in order to get more authentic responses from the subjects, we conducted the system, we conducted the study in public space. And this is the result from the measurement presented with acceptance rates and the red area shows how unwilling the subjects were when using the technology in, in public. And the blue code is for positive responses. And the white part in between red and blue is neutral responses. And the three bars are grouped together, each representing one of the, the tasks. So from left to right is scrolling, so like one from many, and typing. Let's have a closer look at the responses. So regarding the location, the more private the location is, the more willingness in, in using smart glasses with these gestures. And we can see on the right side, there's this workplace, which should be also considered as public space. But in this context, it's actually more likely to be seen as a using smart glasses for professional purposes. So there's still higher acceptability. And the audience is also a factor affecting whether you want to use the techniques or not. Um, as you can see, in front of strangers, it's not so com comfortable for users to use this technique, especially in the middle bars. Have um, we have we found the least acceptance rate for the middle bar, which is the selecting single from many, that involves much of pointing gesture. So the next one is we achieve this unobtrusive interaction. In, a, in an earlier elicitation study where the subjects, they see an animation of visual interface in front of the eyes, and they invent or create their own hand gestures to corresponds to this uh, visual interface. And in the study, they found that 37% of hand gestures were performed in front of the face. But in our study, when there's actual and real interaction happening, none of our subjects perform the gestures in front of the face, and especially in public space. And the subjects were able to complete the task in an unobtrusive manner by keeping posts low. For the text entry performance, we can see um, like in the blue line shows the text entry speed in words per minute, and the red line shows the error rate. And within only 20 minutes, our subjects can reach 5.4 words per minute. And we can compare with other techniques. For example, this palm type, it is also a hand-worn text entry technique for smart glasses. They reach 4.6 words per minute on their IR sensor-based prototype. Another example is using swiping gestures on Google Glasses. They reach 8.7 words per minute, but it, the results come from the last block of an 18-minute experiment, and they didn't um, require subjects to, 
to correct any errors. So we do think our subjects could continue to improve their performance over time, but that also requires a long-term study. Um, we also found that tactile feedback is, is useful for the subjects and help them feel the visual interface more in a more tangible way. And just to remind you, uh, we have these two places that apply the tactile feedback. The first one is when making a selection on the visual finger and also when crossing the edges. I think most of people have this question. Would people be willing to wear an additional garment? Um, well, but what we envision is an integrated wearable system with more than one sensor on the body, so perform, um, that offers more interaction possibilities. For example, there are more and more people wearing smart watches, just like smart glasses coming more and more acceptable. To conclude, we found that obtrusive interaction would affect the readiness of using new techniques technologies, and our hand-worn proposal, uh, our hand-worn solution uh, uses independent tracking technique and also provides tactile feedback. Our subjects were able to complete all the tasks in an unobtrusive manner by keeping the post low, and also they are willing to use the system in public. I would like to show the happy ending. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions, comments? I just had a very specific question about yes. why you didn't put um, the glove on the other two fingers, even though I know you weren't using them as input, but I'm just curious why you made that decision. So what do you mean, leave out the fingertips? Why the glove didn't enclose the other two fingers? Seems like an interesting aesthetic choice. I was just curious. Uh, just because we, um, I guess everyone has a smartphone with a touch interface. So to make it more versatile, we decided to leave the finger out so that you can also at the same time use different devices. <coughs> Hi, um, I'm David Doppelstein from Ulm University. So I was wondering, um, you were using the sitting condition, I think, most of the time. Did you actually like try how the gestures would work and how unobtrusive they were if people were standing or walking? Um, we did the study um, like when people were st uh, sitting, and we didn't consider the in mobile cases. Uh, but in our questionnaire, there's a uh, an entry that's asking people whether you want to use these kind of techniques when you are as a passenger and also on a sidewalk. And the results also shows like very low acceptance rate because it's not practical, like here. Um, I have another question. Yes. Did you actually like try to do it at a public space, like let's say not in front of a lab, but like in a park or in a public scenario, and look at like how bystanders perceive the interaction? You mean in our study? Or yes. Yeah. Or like, or did you think about like extending your work or in future work, doing doing that? Uh, yeah, I think that's possible, but uh, what? But that's just a way to because there are so many different conditions, and we are not possible to cover all different conditions. For example, it can be a cafe, it can be a bar, but, but what's more important for us is to verify whether, to, to give the users an opportunity to use the technique in real environment and then just to see their responses. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Sure. It's sort of a follow up on that. So you're, did, you're defining social acceptability by how the user perceives yes. their willingness to use it in public. How about bystander perception? Yeah, we're aware that the social accessibility should be considered two parties, but uh, unfortunately we didn't include that part in our study, but we are aware that it's included in our paper. Thank you.